I sort of want to start by talking directly to you and then then like a good public servant I will answer the questions so I've been a public servant now for uh, nearly 20 years um, so I can't help but go through questions that are provided to me and provide answers to them but just a little bit of background so I was with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade MFAT um, for about 15 years of my career and MFAT um, many of you will know is a great ministry it really is a fantastic part of government. Uh, it's full of very, very smart people. But MFAT is also quite a nervous place. Um, it's, it can be a very nervous place. And so when I was there, the, the test about the front page of the Dominion was always something that would weigh on decision making or how we acted internally. And the risks of action were often outweighed by the risks of inaction. So we could be, as a, as a department, um, quite risk averse and also somewhat fearful, to be frank, of ministers and prime ministers. And, you know, the role of the public service is to fearlessly provide the best possible advice. Of course, you then take the direction from government because that's their role to set direction and implement it. But it's, as a public servant, it's always to be brave and that can be hard. <laughs> from time to time. And there is a segue now coming into future search. So if I have sort of one key message here today in terms of the power of future search, it is that it enables you to be brave. It enables you to be courageous. Um, it enables you to have tough conversations, to open yourself up to new possibilities and perspectives and to find a common purpose. Um, so, you know, New Zealand really needs good, brave public servants. And that's why I think at a sort of high level that enabling um, government departments through a future search process is a fantastic investment and I'm really supportive of it. Now, the public servant in me, I'll go to the questions. So the first one was, you know, what did I appreciate about the process on Waiheke um, for myself personally and for the voice I was linked to and for the topic. So. For me, I think the most, the most important, the most valuable part of the whole thing was Fanona Tanga. It was the relationships that I formed with the other people uh, that were there and some of whom are, whom are with me on the panel today. I got the chance to take a fresh look at some people that I, or, or you know, some people doing certain things that I might have otherwise pigeonholed. Um, or I might have assumed things about them that were quite incorrect. So um, for me, that, that was a big uh, grounding and learning and, and really valuable. Um, also, I think the grounding in the past that you do through Future Search. So Future Search starts with sort of a deep dive into the things that precede us and the, and the, and the shoulders that we stand on. And so that grounding in the past, the grounding around Te Tiriti, um, forced me to reflect on my own family history. And that's something that still to this day I'm, I'm going through and working through because my ancestors were here at the time of the treaty up north um, and were involved in, in uh, bringing Iwi and Hapu to Waitangi in 1840. And then of course, it was that power of discussing the present, but being very excited about the possibilities together to forge a better future. Um, but I think in all of that, the whole process hinged on those relationships. So I'm hoping too for you guys today, you've met a lot of new people from um, other departments that you might not have connected with yet and that you can build on those relationships to enable all of you to do um, bigger and bolder things in the future. The next question was, what have I noticed since the future search in terms of action that would not have been possible without that common ground experience? And I think, it's, it's not too dramatic to say that Waiheke as a future search process was absolutely amazing for the results that it has produced. You look at where um, we were before then and where we are now. We now have the Rahui, we have the 186A closure, like a cloak, a korowai, right around that motu. Um, we have these like, wonderful ideas about um, restoring koda, crayfish, kelp restoration, the education components that come with this the youth or rangatahi components. Um, very, very special to see Ngāti Pāwa coming back to the motu, um, a motu, an island that they've been estranged from 
for a long time now. Uh, that was really powerful. So I think as a, um, as a process, it has been quite transformational for Waiheke. And it just shows the power. I mean, that was only three days. You know, what could we achieve if we had longer, um, if we did this again? So the final question, and then I think I'm at my six minutes, was to take an opportunity to comment on why you think this whole systems approach would be useful for government departments. And so I think there I come back to the fact that inherent in public service work is a certain risk aversion and fear. And um, just on that basis alone, I think future search is really valuable because it puts you together in greater numbers. And there's just safety in numbers. Um, you know, you can be stronger and bolder together than you might be on your own. Um, and so for me, it's a system which enables you as a collective to achieve more together than you might have otherwise. I also think um, when you look at something like the oceans, the Moana, which is the reason we're all here today, is um, there is so much potential for us to do better in that area. Um, when you think of the big crises um, that we face, so the social crisis in New Zealand, the biodiversity and climate crisis that are global, the ocean has so much potential to help heal those and help us overcome those. And um, so I, I think future search, particularly with regards to something like the ocean, is really powerful. And um, I have one small little idea about that, um, which is that I think we look at New Zealand in the wrong way. We very much look at it as just the whenua. And so when you look at maps, it is just the land, but actually 90% of New Zealand is the ocean. And so I think if, if as part of this, there's sort of a reframing of who we are and where we are, um, I think that can help. Hey, thanks. I guess, uh, you know, I teach um, uh, fisheries and uh, marine ecology at uh, a number of levels at the University of Auckland. And the classic example we uh, go to about boom and bust fisheries is the cod fishery, uh, which is, is probably the best example, but it's just been repeated uh, so many times all around the world. And this is a, a major iconic fishery which, uh, you know, the world's best scientists for nearly 100 years said this, this fishery is indestructible. Uh, you know, humankind uh, cannot uh, uh, destroy this. You know, it's such a robust, uh, productive fishery. And indeed, uh, by the 1990s, we had completely obliterated a massive fishery covering a huge area off the east coast of North America and completely uh, tip the ecosystem on its head. And since that time, uh, the ecosystem has, has not recovered at all. What's really interesting is, you know, at the time, uh, people have since said, well, you know, uh, we didn't have the knowledge, but we live in, uh, you know, since that time, the technology for the oceans is just uh, phenomenal. You know, in, my, in the space of my career, I'm just in, in, in just uh, stunned, stunned by the innovation that we've we've got. So, here's some examples from the Hauraki Gulf, for example. You know, on the top left-hand side, some some of the most advanced underwater acoustics just come through, showing uh, the destruction of the seabed from sand mining off Parkery. In the middle, you know, the you know phenomenally advanced uh, su supercomputer uh, used to model uh, the larval trajectories of mussels coming off the, one of the last remaining mussel reefs in the Hauraki Gulf on the Noisy Islands. And you can see it's replenishing uh, mussels all over the Gulf. Um, down the bottom, you can see uh, drones being flown over whales, Brutus whales, to sample uh, the genetics, uh, you know, basically the saliva in the outbreath so that we can identify the, the family members and calculate the size of the population. We've got gliders, we've got drones, uh, we've got satellites that can watch uh, what's going on. The information is phenomenal. Uh, and so the innovation that we've seen in the last 40 years for the ocean technology is just phenomenal. But when I turn to look at the innovation in terms of ocean management, I'm just appalled. We, we just haven't moved on. We're still operating in the, in the 1980s, 1990s. 
I mean, New Zealand uh, touts the uh, the quota management system as being world leading, but we are still crashing fisheries. And just just this last week, uh, the um, the public discussion document for scallops in New Zealand, for most of the scallop fisheries in New Zealand, um, has has got finished for submission. And you know, there's just a damning uh, story there about how we've crashed that though all of those fisheries. Uh, and we've also destroyed a lot of the benthic environment from using very destructive fishing practices. And again, we're calling for submissions uh, in a in a way that we've done for for forty years, and the system isn't isn't responding. And you know, you've got to start asking why aren't we innovating around the way we manage these things? And it's the same with uh, uh, rock lobsters as well. Really critical in terms of of maintaining the balance with uh, sea urchins. Uh, which uh, or Kenna, which have just been mowing down our kelp forests in the Hauraki Gulf, which are absolutely critical in terms of productivity, in terms of providing habitat, in terms of providing biodiversity. But the fisheries agency uh, just don't want to deal with the with with the issue, and it's been raised again and again and again. The scientists uh, out there, like myself, keep on raising it, but it's just not being uh, integrated with the management decisions. And these are just two examples. If you look at the State of the Gulf report, it's it's just everything's uh, so many things have got a minor sign next to the to the species or the ecosystem. It's just it's just not good enough, and it tells us something about the way our innovation around management is not happening. A few years ago, uh, in 2013, I was really excited when the sea change uh, idea came along. This was a community uh, participatory process that. Uh, a bunch of government agencies got together and said, we're going to run this process and we're going to uh, uh, deliver on the outcomes, um, which was really exciting. Uh, they called uh, Hui, uh, a number of Hui, and I attended a number of those, uh, and they co-opted huge community engagement and iwi uh, engagement. Uh, some of the stakeholder volunteers uh, donated over 2,000 hours of their time. They drove all over the country to go to meetings, huge investment. The taxpayer also put in millions of dollars. And, uh, you know, we're a long way on. Uh, and just last year, the government has released a report saying what it's going to do. But still, we haven't actually seen any uh, hard, tangible uh, outcomes in terms of changes in the environment. That's a lot of investment uh, and not a lot of change. So, you know, there's an example of innovation. Uh, you know, I'm also all for it. And I'd just like to compare that with the future search uh, experience that... Uh, I was engaged, involved in recently. I mean, it brought the community together. There were some really frank and clear discussions about what common issues there were and some good ideas about uh, what could be done. And uh, I don't know what happened there, but there was some, um, something that sparked off in the community and suddenly we started seeing some action. Uh, were Rahui was declared. Uh, a community group's now surveying uh, rock lobsters looking at how they uh, restore those rock lobsters. And uh, another example is I just recently uh, was involved in a, a Ngāti Pua Hui on uh, using Mātauranga Māori for restoring muscle beds around Waiheke. And that meeting had uh, nearly 50 uh, Ngāti Pua there. It's, it's the biggest uh, group of Ngāti Pua I've ever, ever come across. Um, and there were lots of tamariki and rangatahi there, and they were just so engaged and into uh, into the mahi and the kapapa of what's being put forward. So uh, for me, uh, this uh, experience was really novel in terms of the process, uh, the this future search process, delivering some tangible outcomes quickly, and engaging the community in, in progressing those um, those beliefs and feelings about what should happen to the marine environment, and giving the confidence and empowerment to actually uh, progress that. Um, ko Matthew Takuingua, um, no wahiki aho. Um, so just to acknowledge and support Alex and Andrew's um, discussion there, so many good points. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play true to type in the same way that I think um, Andrew and Alex did. So I'm, I'm self-employed, I'm not um, university qualified in anything. So I'm gonna wing it. Um, so no slides, no presentation. Um, the, so um, 
briefly, my involvement with the Waiheke um, Future Search was that I um, was identified as a, as a fisher. Um, so not my main business, but a, a sort of a, almost a hobby business or, or actually a prototype business. Um, I became a qualified skipper and set out to take people saltwater fly fishing. Um, and it's something that struck me um, in my journey as a fisherman um, who was increasingly aware of the environment around me and um, the need for, for care and responsibility. So my fishing practice evolved to the point where um, I did the most weird um, and difficult way of catching fish, which is with a fly rod, no bait. Um, and, and really it's about observation and, um, and, and about all the other elements of why some people really want to engage with the marine environment through fishing. So part of that is this wonderful catch and cook element so that we actually, when I say we, um, yeah, my clients, my family, my friends, the, the ability to catch a fish um, and, and take that fish and eat it is, is just an awesome thing to do. And it's, it's really awesome in this time uh, on a planetary basis. It's wild caught food. It's, it's the most sustainable fish. We can um, be confident we haven't killed seabirds or dolphins. There isn't a corporate structure. Um, it, it, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, so the future search coming along as a fisher um, took some convincing because the conversation on Waiheke was was really polarized and and it wasn't it's it wasn't pleasant and and we've that's what's changed post um, future search is there's <laughs> there's cracks um, where the warmth of human connection is enabling conversations that need to happen um, to begin to happen so it's it's early days and 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 there's still some polarization but the yeah the, the, it wouldn't have happened without future search and, and and it wouldn't have happened without um the future search process actually representing the voices so you know i ended up feeling humbled to be involved and and a sense of um collective responsibility to be there and then the process itself allowed, um, as others have spoken about, to be bold and to be brave and to, to speak a truth. And um, what really struck me was that from a recreational fishing point of view, um, there's a tremendous amount of misinformation and prejudice and um, sort of willingness to dive deeper and the recreational fishing community are pigeonholed often and disproportionately um, blamed if you like particularly in an environment around Waiheke in a community that look out to see and see all these recreational boats so so future search was the beginning of a process where we said well let's start digging a little deeper so I guess my commentary to you all gathered is, um, you know, please do bring yourselves wholeheartedly to the future search process from a um, intergovernmental agency point of view. Um, and, and please be bold and, and be willing to um, just completely think outside the box. Um, we desperately need systems change and and it's actually happening on a personal level. It's happening when people meet. I think um, most people who, who are champions of the, of the future process are saying it's about relationships. It's about people. It's human. And, and then we can start getting to, um, um, as, as Andrew mentioned, the, um, the collapse of fisheries is something that the recreational sector know um, a lot about. And, and we know a lot about it um, from a fisheries management point of view. And, and we, 
as a, as a sector, as, as a whole bunch of the population, um, are, are strangely informed about, or becoming more informed about the intricacies of fisheries management. Um, and, and at the same time, we're becoming increasingly com comfortable and see the partnership with mana whenua, tangata um, tiriti, um, as tangata tiriti is, is the system we require. I'd like to just acknowledge the mana whenua of the motu and um, greetings to everybody who's, who's joined online. I can't see any of you except for my co-presenters, but um, it's nice to see what's coming through on the chat. Um, when I was invited to take part in Future Search, Waiheke Future Search, I was very hesitant and of a bit like, oh, this looks like too much time commitment, just a little bit too much. Um, too intense and and of course I've got to be able to get out of this because I must have far more important things to do um, and I fortunately got over myself and which is by way of introducing myself as, as well to say that of course I had to be there I am the councillor for Waitemata and Golf which covers the city centre the central parts of Auckland and the beautiful Gulf Islands. And I'm also the co-chair of the Haraki Golf Forum, Te Kapa Moana Moana Nui Atua. Once I got there and the, the amazing welcome that we had with Ngāti Paua, which was really central to the whole kaupapa of Future Search on Waiheke. And it was just the most amazing, immersive um, experience right from the beginning. And um, I just thought it was fantastic in terms of especially uh, um, Matt has touched on this bringing a whole cross um, different stakeholders together a whole range of people and the mix of people in the room was quite amazing um, and to, to have everyone there and importantly I think that it was also centered by mana whenua and that was really central to the, the kaupapa of Future Search right from the moment that we kind of stepped onto the shores of, of Waiheke. Um, so I was, did, um, personally, it was an amazing experience, but also what the process taking all of those, I'm calling them stakeholder groups, I'm sure there's probably a better word for it, but those representatives of everyone who's kind of got an interest in the health of the Gulf, um, coming together in the marine environment, coming together and going on a, a journey that um, we were all focused on the same kind of outcomes, but coming at it from very, very different perspectives. And so much of my role is just trying to understand different perspectives and putting myself in people's shoes so that I can, can make good decisions and also understand where people are coming from in terms of how we're gonna get there. So I felt that that, that process really um, was, was amazing and how that was facilitated. And it helped that the food was amazing. Um, you know, just, just very, very central to um, the whole process was the, the amazing Kai and the opportunities um, to come together for that sort of networking and all of that sort of side that goes off, all of that kind of stuff that goes off on the side. Um, so that was, that's kind of answering, I think, the first question, which is about just my experience personally. And then the second um, part I is what you, what I've noticed since um, Future Search in terms of actions that would have not been possible. And I think this is a really interesting question and Alex has touched on it too, in terms of our work as the Hodoki Golf Forum. And, you know, it's great that Andrew has just presented, you know, how dire the situation is, like just, it's just terrible. Um, so we've got to do things differently. And at the moment, the Hodoki Golf Forum and the Hodoki Golf is under not just pressure environmentally, but from a whole lot of forces who are throwing bullshit at us. And I think because of Future, who was on the walker, it meant that we are now in such a stronger position 
um, to take forward um, what we're trying to achieve for the Hauraki Golf. Um, and we're going to be really tested. Um, I can go into kind of, I can't go into all the details of it, but it, I think um, when we were just catching up at the beginning, Dan was mentioning we, we got inundated with about 1,500 emails over the weekend from people who were trying to stop us deliver on good environmental outcomes for the golf. And um, but I think we're all stronger as not just as a forum, but as all of our allies, stakeholders, because of um, future search. And then finally, um, this is probably a good um, wrap up, just um, about the third question is why whole systems approach would be useful in government departments. And this is where I do have to confess that um, back in the 90s, I did used to work in a government department at the Ministry of Fisheries. And um, one of the most um, memorable experiences I had at that time was doing treaty training with um, Sir Widow Gardner. And I just think at that time, if I, I had been, I would have totally embraced being able to do a future search process, um, knowing what I know in terms of um, government departments, but I can't, you know, I haven't, I'm not an official now, I am in the kind of governance role, but from what I know of Auckland Council, um, there's so many silos and the way in which thinking is done. And so future search is a way, I think, to break down a whole lot of those, those silos. So I think it would be immensely useful. Um, so that's probably enough for me, but I did just want to um, acknowledge Miranda and um, Hede Aroha for being the wahini tour of um, Future Search when we were on Waiheke. Um, you were um, amazing in how you you kept that those three days flowing and everybody in a good good humor and um, we all get, Kept, kept it all together in a few moments there. I thought a few people would just completely lose it, but you kept bringing us together, giving us that group hug, um, which was amazing. And talking of wahine tour, I'm really pleased that Lucy is following after me to, to wrap up the panelists because um, she's one of the most amazing women I know. So kia ora, Lucy. Katsua. Uh, tūtahi mihi tēnei uh, ki te whenua taketake, ko o te aroa. Um, kia koe te katoa, ngā waka e maha, uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, Hiuri tēnei nō Ngāti Pāwai mihi ana ki a, a tātou e hui tahi nei. Kia ora everybody, uh, my name is uh, Lucy Tukua and um, really happy to be uh, supporting this conversation, this corridor, um, in regards to uh, why uh, central government and local government, of course, um, should get on the waka when it comes to proper engagement with um, with our Fano. And when I think about engagement with our Fano, you know, I'm talking about everything, absolutely everything. We talk about um, whole systems, and so. Uh, we don't separate ourselves um, from our tonga. And um, it's been quite a learning journey and in terms of the sea change, kaupapa, uh, I was supported and mandated by mana whenua to be one of the four mana whenua representatives on the stakeholder working group. And for me, you know, it was really tough because everybody came with their own kitty and um, and they were weren't those ones that you know the pippy ones where you can let the water out and, and, and share and so um, it was quite a tough journey at the beginning to support um, the conversations because everybody had their own poi and we're rowing their own waka. And so it's no surprise that it took us, um, you know, a number of years uh, to get to the point where um, we now have that document in front of us. Um, and then it took ages for the, for the government to, um, you know, put some, put some, I guess, uh, resourcing and support um, behind that. Uh, but now we have the revitalizing the Gulf 
um, document. And so I reflected, um, you know, I talked about language and stuff, and sometimes we're so poles apart. Um, the corridor around Tonga species, where Tonga species is regarded as something that you'd have a economic gain. And so um, that, you know, things like that were really hard to kind of um, support. And um, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, outcomes for me in terms of, of the recommendations was around the Ahumwana, Ahumwana uh, recommendation where through conversations, it was about how do we empower uh, not only agencies, organisations, you know, those were sitting at, that were sitting around the table holding their kete closely to their chest, uh, but also our communities to um, support the regeneration and the uplifting of, of Māori, of Te Kapa Moana. Um, going along to, to that launch and then learning that um, there were projects that were being tagged for Ahu Moana, uh, I guess for me was disappointing because on Waiheke, um, a place very close to my heart, um, my um, tupuna buried over there, that's where my bones are from, um, that and we were already working on our Waiheke Marine project. Um, and it was sad because uh, we were overlooked and uh, we weren't one of those projects um, that, that had been um, tagged. But nonetheless, you know, um, like good warriors, we just uh, staunched on and um, carried on with our kaupapa. Um, and as a Uri, as a descendant of Ngāti Pāwa, from the hapu, um, Ngāti Hura, Ngāti Kapu, um, we really felt that even though um, we have, uh, I guess, even ourselves, you know, we, we, we struggled to get our people together um, and coming through to the to the Future Search event, um, there was such a lot of work that we had to do in the background to make sure that we were match fit. Um, it was really important that um, the Future Search event was um, co-facilitated and again, like others, acknowledge the work um, from Miranda and Hede Aroha um, actually, all the whānau that got in behind that and um, made it such a successful event. Um, what I really appreciated about that, that experience was that we got to have all those uh, whānau in the room. I don't, I don't like the word stakeholder, mana whenua cringe whenever you say that because we're not stakeholders. Um, and... I guess in terms of location as well, if you're going to run something like that, you can't not have it where you know where you want to um, make those awesome changes. And so, as a regenerative practitioner, my practice is really around um, in terms of the approach, place sourced, culture led, and community fed. And I make no apologies that it has to be in that order. Um, and the other part to it, um, in terms of future search uh, outcomes, is that there is a real close affinity that, um, you know, those residing on the island, uh, but also, um, you know, we talk about Ngā Poitou or Taramainuku, you know, the... the um, The uh, the the net the uh, gosh wari wari o um anyway the the boys say eh, on the nets of Taramainuku are those islands within the harbour, um just acknowledging the support in the in the work that's required to support and regenerate those islands as well, um and the support from um 
from across Tāmaki and, and nationally as well is, has been really important. And so um, that has been quite a significant, uh, I guess, way in which we have been able to bring our community together. Um, and that is um, signified by the work that we're doing um, currently as part of the Waiheke Marine Project. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, for me, it is about ensuring that I'm taking my, my mokopuna along, um, that Ngāti Pāua on the journey, acknowledging other iwi as well that that have an affinity, a whakapapa connection uh, to Waiheke Island. When we talk about nested systems, we think about Waiheke, um, which is nested within Te Kapa Moana, uh, Te Moana Nui o Toi, um, Tāmaki Makaurau Aotearoa, and we're not separated. Yeah, it's basically, Richard, about how you build and sustain support, right? Um, especially in a big organisation where there may be a lot of levels, and that, that is a real challenge. I think um, when I look at our own context in the forum, I'll give you an example. We, thank you, so it's my daughter who's just come home. Um, so we've got... Uh, a very diverse bunch of people around our table. And so the question that I had was, we want to support marine protection, but if I say 30% marine reserves, I'll get Andrew, but I'll probably lose Lucy and Matt. And if I say, you know, if I say uh, no marine protection at all, I'll lose all three of them. And then, you know, and and so I guess really what I'm saying there is, is how can you find the common threads amongst the people that you need to influence within your organization to uh, push towards that goal, even if even if it not might not get you there as fast or as directly as you might hope, if you get there with the relationship strengthened and intact, uh, you'll get there in, in better position. I also recognize that I'm quite lucky in my current role, I'm empowered. So if I think it's a good idea, I take it to the board and suggest it, um, but not everybody's lucky enough to be in that position. So it really is about relationships, about seeking out those in your organization, having an open chat, um, about your experiences here or wherever else it is, and in terms of um, finding that common ground on what it is you're looking to, to achieve in that regard. Um, because if you take the time to do that side of it well, the rest of it will flow. Kia ora. Just a, a quick acknowledgement to what's been already said. I, I, I um, it's sort of really um, need to, to hear the thoughts and, and, and um, the whakaaro that's come from the panelists because it's just um, my mind just goes back to what was said and some of the key things that um, that um, had an impact on me. One was um, seeing a lot of my colleagues, the likes of Andrew Jeeves, um, Glenn Carbines, Mike Morrison, and others from Niwa. It was like a family reunion for me, but also having uh, my relations with Bati Pao in the house um, there as well. Um, yeah, no, that was quite a special moment, having all these um, perspectives in the whare. With all their, um, they've got their, their own sort of uh, a passion that they brought um, to, the, to the table, but everybody got, a, got a, a, an opportunity to speak. And I think that was the key thing for me, that everybody was um, got a, a chance to speak even now of Rangatai. And so, this, that, to me, um, the Rangatai was the one that was, 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 the, was the, the part that I was really, really interested in, in hearing their perspectives about what did they, what was their thinking about about um, what had happened in the past, what was what had happened, what were they, uh, uh, their thoughts around what was happening currently, but also more, more importantly about the future. And so having our mana whenua de Ngāte Hura uh, Duri Kuraka and Ngāti Kapu in the house um, and having people like Tipa and um, the Tuahine here, Lucy and others, just um, 
giving a really straight up the guts, no nonsense um, um, context to where their thinking's always been. And having everybody else in the room there uh, getting a better understanding about how, how, how much things have shifted shifted in the way of thinking we are much where our people are thinking in regards to to trying to get stuff done and so i think that after the future church, future search um experience one of the things the key things i think that came out of it was the importance of going hand in hand um to get the, this sort of stuff done and um and that's why you know maybe he got to get where miranda uh, leading off on this and getting everybody to get on that one footy because it, it worked you know, and I'll tell you how fast it worked. Um, when, after all the court at all, uh, we went home to our respective uh, whare. Of course, we talked about the whole experience. And one of the things that came back was Kau Mata was saying, hey, we want to put an ahui down. And that was that was quite ambitious. We're talking about an ahui right around all of Waiheke. And um, so being bold and being brave, my wife went to, um, first and foremost, held a, a, a hui at uh, Piritahi Marae, but didn't just, get, didn't just um, approach her relations from um, the three hapu of Ngāti but also Ngā Mātāwaka as well. Um, so no, no surprise, we got a, a really strong um, uh, sense of um, commitment support for the Rāhi to, be, to, to go ahead. But the one part that my wife so this could not go ahead without um, getting the community from Waiheke as well together. So that was done in two weeks. You know, when I say there's two hui, but over a two-week period, nearly got 100% commitment straight away. Now, I'm not too sure if that would have happened um, if we didn't have the Future Search um, Kaupap Wānanga to bring everybody together. And so um, so that's that's a sort of... Um, um, sort of uh, uh, observation, a um, bit of insight that I'd like to um, share with, with everybody that's um, attending this workshop today. So, haere tōna mihi kia koutou ia kūranga tira. Thank you for the question and um, tēnā koe apanui. I think your um, comments really covered a, a lot of the other questions, well, one of, particularly one of the other questions I was asked about how does it help decision making and I think what you just said really summed it up so I just wanted to <laughs> acknowledge that about having those different perspectives and also just um, to talk about um, Lucy um, your comment about um, mana whenua not being stakeholders and that's definitely not what was presented at the, the hui or how it felt at the hui so I did just want to that was a, just a poor choice of words on my part and I think just what Apanui said it was about having the different perspectives um, was the key thing centered on um, mana whenua um, leading the corridor. So I hope, hope that, that just clarifies that point. And sorry, that just to get me back to the, the question, which was where is it coming from? Well, um, this is now, I, I think, like the example of the Rahui being really fast decision making because of the, the Rahui. What's happening now, we're trying to take our. Uh, um, the progress that we've been making even further and for the Haraki Golf Forum that's all based on co-governance and our partnership approach and there are forces like who've been circling waiting to pounce who are, I mean simplistically anti-treaty you know this is Hobson choice groups who are trying to use the forum um, to advance that cause and I think because of the different perspectives who've been, who've got this really shared understanding of what we're trying to achieve and the outcomes we achieve, might have different views on how we get there. We're all much more, more um, we've been much more strengthened um, as a, not just as a forum, but from all of our allies and mana whenua who are, you know, really pushing us ahead to adopt co-governance um, and entrench that in the legislation. So. That's kind of, it is quite a complete, you know, there's a lot going on that's that's generated all that. I'm sure Alex would be able to sum it up much better than I have just done there. But but I do feel that having us um, grounded in that future research process and having all come together has been a, has given us a lot of strength as we face this down. It's all going to come to a head on the 28th of February. So at our forum meeting, so wish us luck. <laughs>
to also support um, Pippa's uh, kōrero there and the, and the ignorance and fear that Alex and Pippa face. Um, and hopefully this is um, me answering your question, is that, um, you know, what, what I see, um, just lovely to see these people's faces um, here having um, experienced that future search process, but actually come together um, and, and learned and, and impacted and, and, and came with all of our differences. So to answer your question simply, um, yeah, the, the future search and, and these people in this room and have taken me on a journey where um, I'm hugely optimistic about the future of uh, restored abundance, about co-management, about, oh, let me put it, let me do it the other way around. Um, I, I'm optimistic about uh, fish in the sea and that's habitat, that's environment, that's um, non-destructive fishing that Andrew Jeffs has, has you know, quickly touched on. And, and the optimism comes from um, a system change which is based around um, tetiriti partnership, it is based around um, aspirations of Māori, it is based around um, the realisation for tangata tiriti of which I am to understand that what is good for Māori is good for everyone. And, um, and in this way, I just sort of offer um, some encouragement too, is that, you know, we, I, I may not be in the majority of what you would call, you know, fishers or fishing community, but, but we are a, an increasing number who are, are more than comfortable with this shifting, you know, shifting reality of if we honour the treaty, if we um, accept, not accept, but if we embrace that, that um, Rahui uh, and, and, and all sorts of other measures that are led by mana whenua, but done with community, we have the sort of local management, we have the restoration, we have the, the um, you know, the, the, the side, yeah, we're learning about what Modi is and that people are part of that. Kia ora. So, um, yeah, we know that um, the Tetiriti space is, is also always a moving, evolving space. Um, but to be honest, I think a lot of uh, positive work is, is happening out there. Um, a lot of, um, you know, Māori are being, I guess, um, uh, headhunted. <laughs> by a lot of organisations, whether they be in the public sector or the private sector, to support um, that cultural capacity and, and that kind of work. Um, and so um, in terms of the Ahumwana Pātai, uh, oh, get our assets wet. No. Um, yeah, my vision for Ahumwana is, is the same as it ever was. Um, and... I remember having this conversation with our mana whenua representatives on the stakeholder working group and we were trying to come up with some ideas around, you know, we reacronized the MPA and it was marae pātaka areas and then we thought, well, you know, we know a lot of our marae are coastal um, and supporting a, um, you know, the local mana whenua and that local community to, to develop their own kind of marae pātaka areas, how could we expand on that? And so um, having another conversation with one of our rangatira from one of the, the iwi on the project working group, he said, oh, Agarit, let's just go, go the whole hog and just, you know, um, support uh, Ahumwana um, across our whole coastline. And so that, that's kind of where that came from. And and um, my, my vision for Ahumwana is that um, it's, it's just going to be something that we do. It's not something that needs to be legislated. It's not something that needs to be shoulder tapped or, um, you know, prioritised. Um, it's just something particularly like what we're doing in, in 
on waiheke and that's just you know giving it our hundred percent um devotion um and aroha kia ora kia ora lucy there was one uh question on top i don't know if you can do it in 30 seconds which was in addition to your vision, how could Kawanatanga help to support that real its realization? Um, yeah, well, that's where we need to have those brave conversations that somebody's already talked about. Um, because you know, Kawanatanga is also about that relationship in terms of tangata tiriti and Matt talked about that and so let's not try and um, put ourselves into these boxes you know let's kind of just lower lower those walls and um, and take the opportunity to sit together uh, to discuss and to wānanga ways forward um, and if it is around our marine environment then we need to be ensuring that we're having that conversation with our moana. Kia ora. 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 Kia